Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video we're going to look at lighting for an action shot. Here we've got Lucy in a running pose with a camera set up. So we're going to light this to make it look like a pretty awesome action shot. Before I get started, I want to say thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons and members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So what we want to do is we want to make this look dramatic. And the best way to do that is to have some really solid shadows. And perhaps we can add some kind of effects in post, but I'll leave that up to you. What we're going to do is create the effect in Dash Studio. So the first thing we want to do is just like our previous videos, we need to create a light source and I'm going to use one meter soft boxes. So we're going to have plane with one meter, one division. We're going to hit accept and immediately we're going to drag this over to the left hand side and we're going to drag it up and we're going to rotate it on the z-axis 90 degrees so that it's that way now what we're also going to do is we're actually going to rotate it uh, along the y-axis or what was originally the z-axis so we're going to hit the rotate tool like this and we're going to highlight the green ring and rotate it about 45 degrees or thereabouts and what we want to make sure is that when we look at our seen from the side the light source is not further forward than the model's shoulder and then we can make adjustments afterwards if we need to what we also want to do is go into our render settings tab and in environment we want to make sure that we're set to scene only like this and we can switch off draw ground as well it doesn't really matter but ultimately we want to make sure that the hdri lighting is turned off so that the only light sources are going to be the ones that we intentionally put in place so with our plane selected we're going to open the surfaces tab and we're going to expand all of these down till we get to emission click on the black bar here and drag the light source up to white and we're going to change the luminance units to the second one down, which is KCD over M2. And we're going to jump into our camera view. And let's have a look in NVIDIA IRO mode and see what effect that gives us. So as you can see, that's quite dramatic. And because of the hair on the model, in fact, I might change the hair in a different uh, video. But that's kind of created a shadow over the face of the model. But that's, that's quite a dramatic light source. I might experiment with the position a little bit. So we're going to come back out of NVIDIA IRO preview mode. Back into texture shaded. Come into our perspective view again and we're going to look at perhaps moving this back even more so we're going to go into our move tool and we're on the z axis we're going to drag it back so that the light source is more in line with the the hips and we're looking at this front edge because obviously a light source like this is omnidirectional which means the light's traveling in all directions so we want this light source to not be able to cast light on the model's face so that's probably closer to what I'm after. So we'll quickly jump in. And that to me just looks a little bit better. There's not too much light bleeding around the front of the face and the limbs and all that sort of thing. So back out of NVIDIA IRO mode we go into perspective view like that. And we're going to basically just create a carbon copy of that light source. So in order to do that, we're just going to go create, make sure I've got our plane selected and we're going to go to create new node instance and just click accept. And that will appear on the floor like that. So we'll move that one into position as well. And we want it to basically mirror what we've got on that side of the model. So we'll use our parameters tab and we'll rotate it around the Z axis. 90 degrees like so and we'll drag it back into position the same as we did with that one and we can go into our top view just to kind of check that we're more or less in the same position and obviously to rotate that 
away like so and in position this way and then obviously we have to drag it up so that it's more or less in the same place there like that so now when we go into our camera view and we switch back to nvidia iray mode what you can see is it's giving us a really nice dramatic lighting effect but i'm still feeling like these lights are a little bit too far forward because this back arm is very very heavily lit partly because its position is back past the body so this light's hitting it heavily from both sides but i feel like we could stand to move both of those back so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to put these both into a group by selecting them both clicking on create new group and just hitting accept like that now we go out of our nvidia iray mode and into perspective view we notice that now that we have one move widget which will allow us to move both like so so that's a bit further back that's probably closer to where it needs to be come back into nvidia iron mode again and this is the process is just going backwards and forwards a lot you can if you've got a powerful enough gpu make a lot of adjustments in nvidia iron mode but obviously if you suffer from performance issues like most people do then you may struggle now the second thing that i'm noticing is that there's a lot of burned out highlights these light sources are very very bright at the moment so we're going to adjust those as well we only need to change the properties of the first plane because the second plane will automatically change so we're going to come into our emission settings and i'm going to drop that down to about a third and we can see now that that looks a lot more acceptable there's a lot less bleeding and burned out highlights there in fact we could probably stand to go down again by half again and i think maybe 500 was fine there we go like that so that's our first part of our lighting setup now the next part's going to take a little bit of finesse and we're going to need to do it in the camera view but we can jump out quickly and we're going to create this time we're going to create a sphere for no other reason than it's round diameter is probably about right and segments and sides maybe that's fine that's fine we'll, we'll work with what we've got now what we need to do is move this into position so that it's directly behind the model's head and we'll do that by very basically getting that into position and then jumping into our camera view and then once we've got it into position we can adjust the surface properties of that and this one's going to have to be pretty bright so we're going to change the emission color to white again Hit OK. Change our luminance units to KCD M over M blah, 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 blah. KCD over MR2. And then we'll switch straight into NVIDIA IRA mode. So what I'm noticing about this, apart from the fact that it's too big, is it's also a bit too low. So we're going to drop drag it up a little bit because we want it to be able to cast a little bit of light on the top of our model and this is where a little bit of experimentation will come in handy and we're looking for a highlight over the top of the head and shoulders to match the kind of highlight that we're getting from those models albeit a little bit probably a bit brighter so let's try going up to 10,000 here we need it to be quite a bit brighter it's creating a bit of a highlight but I think we probably need to bring that closer along the z-axis so I'm going to try 75 and as you can see, that's creating way too much light over the top of the head. So that was, it needs to be minus 75 would probably help. And there you go. That's just thrown that little bit of light over the top of the head and shoulders like that. Now, obviously having these visible in the scene isn't ideal. So what we can do is we can drag that into there as well so that it's all in the same group and then for this plane we're going to go to the geometry section of the surfaces tab and we're going to drop the cutout opacity 0 0.0001 as low as we can possibly get it and then you'll notice that the brightness of that light does drop quite a bit so we need to go back to the emission tab and probably increase that back to 1500 there we go that's giving us that light back and then the sphere we can do the same thing go into the geometry tab and change our 
cut out opacity to 0.0001 and then that just makes that mostly invisible as well so we've got kind of a nice dramatic looking uh, portrait lighting setup here good for action shots and then the last little touch that we can do is if we actually access our camera this way and we go into our parameters and we can actually rotate it on the z-axis slightly and give the image a bit of a dutch tilt and that just gives us a little bit more of an action feel so i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below smash like and i will see you in the next one Bye bye